Their skin is highly prized. Garments and bags made out of crocodile leather are considered luxury items. But here in Mexico, hunting the endangered American crocodile is not allowed. This farm in the northwestern state of Sinaloa breeds crocodiles for commercial use, as well as for the purpose of conservation. Some are released into the wild, while others are sold. The leather garnered from a single crocodile is worth about 500 euros. It's a lucrative project which will provide us with an income. We've been given a permit that allows us to do business in the crocodile trade. GIZ is a German organization that specializes in international development. It wants to identify projects that promote the conservation of flora and fauna. The farmers have to combine their commercial activities with their commitment to replenishing crocodile stocks. For every animal sold, others must be released into the wild. As long as these conditions are met, the project will receive funding from conservation authorities in Mexico. Some of the positive, I think, impacts that this project could have um, is, for instance, if, um, if the family were fishing before, this allows them to have an alternative source of income, even though maybe it, it won't be enough uh, to really feed all their families and sustain themselves, but it's something additional and also it can help reduce the pressure on the ecosystem by you know, having them do other activities. I think it's also important because it will help the local crocodile population to increase. Conservationists in Mexico have counted only 120 wild crocodiles in the waters on the Gulf of California. Crocodiles are slow to reproduce because they don't reach sexual maturity until the age of about 10. While crocodiles might inspire fear in locals who fish, they play an important role in the ecosystem. Crocodiles are very important for the ecosystem. They're predators, so they keep other animals in check. They hunt and they eat sick animals. And that helps ensure the health of bird, reptile and fish populations. The Gulf of California is rich in biodiversity. This area alone features 18 protected areas. That occasionally leads to clashes with locals. Oyster farmers are one group affected by the conservation efforts. They used to set up their nets on the mangroves on the coast. In general, breeding oysters actually improves water quality because the creature's shells filter out pollutants but some changes were needed. People used to cut down the mangroves. The trees weren't able to grow back. But since the wetland was declared a protected area, we no longer cut down the mangrove trees. A success story illustrating effective cooperation between locals and conservationists. It's just the kind of project that GIZ is on the lookout for. The idea is to introduce successful projects to other areas too. This project is a very good example of what can be done uh, in a wetland and not have negative impacts on the wetland. So in the Biomar program, we took this example and shared it with other communities. Another of these successful conservation programs on the Gulf of California focuses on saving turtles from extinction. It's important to keep the beaches clean and tidy because that's where the turtles come on land. The plastic poses an obstacle for them, and it would also be harmful if they ate it. Olive Ridley sea turtles come here at night to lay their eggs. Dania Rios Olmeda heads up the project. He shows us where one of the turtles built a nest the previous night. He's been working to protect them for more than 40 years. I've had the privilege of releasing four to four and a half million turtles into the wild. 
Today, he's invited pupils from a local primary school to help release baby turtles. The team shows them how turtles normally hatch in the sand and then dig themselves out. Each child gets to name a turtle before releasing it into the wild. This girl names hers Estrella, or Star. She wants her to dive right down to the seabed. He's called his Isabel and hopes that she returns to the beach often. He says he loves her very much. Turtles are instinctively drawn to the sea. Only a few of them will live long enough to lay eggs on this beach themselves. Still, Daniel is happy with his work. By educating children, I'm giving the turtles a longer life. Kids used to come here to go swimming, but now they come to set the turtles free. Their parents used to catch them. But now the children say, no, Dad, you aren't allowed to take that turtle home.